Peace and blessings, family. This is your brother, Asar M. Hotep with the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology. And today is Kaumba, Friday the 15th. And we have two very, very special guests with us today. Uh, we have sister, we have back uh, sister uh, Felicia Hardin. And I believe this is the first time uh, she has been on our program, and that is Dr. Brittany uh, Motley, both with the Hoppy Film Entourage. And we're going to talk about the uh, Detroit conference, and we're going to talk about the uh, trip that we just relatively came back from, and the upcoming trip, as well as the uh, DVD for the conference uh, that was held in Detroit, Michigan. All that and more when we return in just a moment. outside once again i'll be outside during the whole summer so this time i am in marion pa it's just a suburb suburb i cannot speak today a suburb somewhere like right near norristown uh near kind of a little bit past king of pressure and before you hit melbourne right so um if you hear like water i don't know if y'all can see that on my left like right there you'll see a little i guess motorized fountain in the quasi fox lake in the back you know if you see a giraffe pass by um or some other wildlife you know it's just just part of the part of the makeup but um i want to thank you all for joining me and we have again a very very special uh show uh if you've been pa i mean following the past two shows you know that we have been getting some insight and feedback uh from the recent trip to egypt from some of just the they're not ordinary people, but the the folks who went on the trip, very special folks who went on the trip, and you got to hear about their experiences, their feelings, and the like about the trip. And so with us today is two of the organizers for the trip, as well as the... Um, the conference that was held in May of this year in Detroit, Michigan, from which both of them actually hailed from. Uh, but they don't know nothing about Slum Village and uh, Jay Dilla. Uh, and nobody can seem to help me find the, the sister who sang the song is so cold in the deep. Like they they're not trying to claim her. Uh, so we're going to get to the bottom of that and we're going to have her on the show uh, and, and do a concert and the like. But before we do that, I want to shout out everyone who was listening live on Facebook and on Twitter and, of course, on YouTube. And those who have made themselves known in the chat, uh, peace and blessings always to Sister Mika. One is in the building and 
uh, Akon Devine and Richard Sheffield is in the building. And I cannot see your comments on Twitter. Um, so I will just have to keep going back and forth on Twitter uh, to look for any questions or look for any um, uh, comments that you make. And thank you, thank you. And um, hold on one sec. Because you know I'm a one man band here, and so stuff don't want to be working and clicking like you want them to be working and clicking. Uh, Peace uh, VC is in the building, and our good brother Robert Rand is in the house, New York representing. And you know we be having folks from all over the place and all over the world, and I will be shouting y'all out throughout the uh, show. So. Make sure that each and every one of you um, hit the like button and That is right. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell. So when we have all of these dynamic guests and conversations on the Unbongi, that you will be the first to know. So we have a scheduled interview coming up, but we're going to I have to set the date. So I won't tell you who is going to be just yet, but keep your uh, eyes in ears to the streets and the only announcement is that i am working diligently and almost finished with uh writing this particular text it's called race and identity in ancient egypt volume one of a three volume series towards a meaning for the place named kemet and so came across some new information that required me to alter some information in some very key spots and um i i had to go out and get some some feedback from some some scholars in the field uh since this this area is not my primary uh field of study so i've gotten some feedback waiting for some others and some adjustments are being made but that text should be done it was originally scheduled for the fall but definitely by the end of the year um, it should be out so y'all keep an eye on that and of course make sure you go uh, check out the muntu wine zombie text portrait of human as god's special creation by dr chilema lima mukinge and you know it is a very dynamic text and you know everyone who i know who has been able to uh, garner it has said that this is a very very valuable text and they've gotten to learn so much so it's 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 almost rare that you get you know truly text written by someone who was born and raised speaks the language you know of their own traditions and can give you an insider's view versus a uh, a sociological or anthropological point of view uh in a in a very uh, academic he's an academic so it's, it's still presented in a very academic way um but it it is not an, an outsider's point of view and it it brings a lot of clarity to you know this this phenomenon that we call kimoyo which is you know the the word that we use to replace african spirituality and of course there's really your videos uh along those lines for which you can get uh, deeper insight and that's an upcoming text as well on kimoyo and what that is so make sure you go to amazon.com uh, and get you a copy of Dr. Chilin Malema Mukenge. You can also check out his interview that we did on this channel. I think we have like two interviews uh, with him. 
And so this is a book that I published and, you know, it's one of the first of many under the Mondo and Della Press uh, publishing company. So y'all be on the lookout for that. So, and lastly, if you haven't, if you're just really into linguistics and language, you can check out Chiluba Mawedja, Yoruba Orisha, and Ancient Egyptian Ak, an exploratory etymological study. Um, and, you know, we're we're kicking off the into calm uh, discipline. And so we'll get more and more on that later. But without further ado, I want to introduce to you our two very lovely and special guests. We want to welcome back Sister Felicia Harden. And we want to welcome to the program, I believe for the first time. Y'all know I'm getting old, so I'll be forgetting stuff. Uh, Sister Brittany Motley, PhD, Dr. Motley, as we call her. So I want to welcome each and every one of you to the program. And how are y'all doing? It's so cold in the D. What you know about tea, baby? Hey, hey, look. There's just certain things <laughs> that make its way down the pipeline. And, and that's one of them joints. <laughs> well, you went back. You went back. Yeah. I ain't good I saw that video outside of D, uh, outside of Detroit. Yeah, there's there's some stuff I'm pretty sure we all wish didn't leak past uh, our neighborhood boundaries, but that's one of them. we should jam that bug. I first thought it was Dallas because you know you know Texas centric, so I thought yeah. they were talking about Dallas, but no, nope, no, nope. because it do snow in Dallas, you know, in, in North Texas. In central and southern Texas, it's just hot as hell. But um, but outside of that, again, uh, both of our guests hail from Detroit, Michigan, and they are in association and part of the essential fabric of the Hoppy movement. And so, uh, I want for those of you, excuse me, for those who are new to you. I want you to kind of introduce yourself, tell them what you do, and briefly, how did you get involved in the Hoppy Movement? We're going to start with Sister Felicia, and then we're going to go to uh, Dr. Miley. Wow. Oh, my God. How did I get that? Um, so, um, okay. I was waiting in my car, <laughs> this just sounds so so odd. So I was waiting in my car for my kids to come out of Kumon. And when I saw Brother Taiki on the street and he was uh, filming part of Hoppy, he was filming the, um, the portion where we are showcasing black businesses in, in, in um, you know, in, in Harlem. And so as I was sitting there and I was, you know, we were talking because I'm, I'm mad nosy. Anybody that knows me knows I'll just talk to anybody. So we started talking. He was telling me about the film. And what really sparked my interest interest at that point was when he was saying he 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 had shot some in Egypt and, you know, he goes to Egypt. And I was like, wow. And up until that point, you know, I don't know if I was consciously thinking like, oh, I want to visit Egypt. But when he said that, it's just sort of something went off you know, I guess in my brain. And I was like, I think I want to travel, you know, with your group. And so our conversations about uh, me traveling is how we started to talk about uh, Hoppy. And, you know, when I first met him, I don't know, sometimes when you're on the street, you talk to people and, and, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, I'm a math teacher. Oh yeah, I, te I, I love math. I teach math too. You know, like people are always just kind of saying stuff. So when he was telling me about being a filmmaker and stuff, I didn't want to, you know, say, oh, I'm a filmmaker too. And, oh, I do that. Da, da, da. I just really listened and, you know, what he was talking about. And um, I remember the name Hoppy. And when I went home, I um, I looked it up and I found the GoFundMe page. And I was like, OK, this is legit. You know, I, I donated some money and I was like, that's what's up. But my my original draw was really this this, uh, you know, getting to Egypt. And so just over those conversations, I would kind of suggest like, oh, maybe you should think about blah, 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 blah with the film. And he was like, okay, so look, all these little suggestions, you can literally, like, can you do them? <laughs> and so I'm like, well, um, 
yeah, you know. So eventually, we just started working together, and um, and I just I, my whole life just turned upside down <laughs> from <laughs> yeah. Because up until this point, I didn't know a Professor James Small or an Infodician Juhuti Miss or a Sar Emotep. I didn't know y'all. I just, you know, <laughs> knew I was black. I love being black. I like helping black people. <laughs> and that, that, that was literally, really how everything came, um, you know, came around. And I was, I've been in this excessive uh, phase of just trying to learn as much as I can right now. So, All yeah. right. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, uh, Dr. Motley. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So let's see. How did I start with Hoppy? It started out um, actually when I was doing a Sacred Woman through Queen of Four. That's how I first learned about the film and then watched the film. And then um, while getting initiated into Shrine of My Eye, that's how I actually met Taki. And to Felicia's point, I think what was so attractive about the Hopi movement is it it's very, very uh communal. Like, you know, it like regardless of what's your religion, what's your belief, like all of the things, you have a place if you're black, <laughs> you know, at Hopi. Like I just felt such such a sense of belonging. And so I remember coming to uh one of the Hopi events and just working one of the tables. And from there, like me and Felicia, we just kind of bonded from there. I just rolled up my sleeves and I don't know, it was something about that Detroit sister thing. We just kind of, you know, linked up in that way. And it's just been history ever since. But I, I would say I just love the, the movement because I feel a sense of belonging in it just because, you know, regardless of the diversity um, within the black community, uh, it doesn't matter in, in the happy space. And so that's just my favorite thing about it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, I was in the film uh, briefly. Um, I met I think we we physically met for the first time in Detroit. I actually I guess for both of you uh, in at the conference. So you know, uh, I've only seen them uh, in this space you know, digitally. So, um, so I can vouch that they are real people and that they, it, it, it's not uh, fake news, animation, uh, deep fakes. Um, and, you know, gotten to know, uh, and, and of course, still getting to know uh, them very well. And they, you know, have uh, made a made a space and you know, and welcoming and expanding the the message of of Hoppy, and you know, we'll we'll probably get Brother Taki back on the show uh, sometime in the future. You know, he's doing everything and nothing at the same time. Um, so, but you know, the and I and when we had you on the last time, we we know we had you to explain this. But why was Detroit? selected after the mayhem uh of february with you know who i affectionately call the arabized russian bots and their evil plans to uh destroy the movement um and for those of that know the the original conference was supposed to be held in aswan in Egypt during the original February tour. And some political things transpired and we had to postpone uh, the both the conference and the, uh, the tour, which were one and the same in February, but became two separate events. And so given that both you and Taki are in New York. Why go over the Great Lakes to uh, to Detroit? What 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 was it about Detroit that was uh, that was like we need to have it here? 
Well, of course, we have a bias towards Detroit being native there. I mean, it's a no brainer. <laughs> but no, I would say it was really an, a decision to go where the community was and go where the resources was, um, was kind of the driving factor. You know, after everything had happened in February and, and we were looking to act quickly, I think it it was it was a no brainer just you know from the connections we had in Detroit just from the powerful movements that are happening in Detroit it, it just really really made sense and so you know it took Felicia kind of pulling out her connections Taki pulling out his as well and and that's what what really uh, landed us there and as you can see from the experience I mean it just it was it was amazing just from you know partnering with New Era Detroit and Queen Nandi and you know kind of all of the all of the stakeholders and pillars in Detroit who are holding it down and just who were willing to open their doors and provide resources and just come together quickly to make the conference happen. So that's really, really uh, what brought us there. Yeah, absolutely. Anything to add, uh, Sister Felicia? Plus, you know, Detroit had better COVID restrictions, if you think about it. <laughs> and it's cheaper. And it's the D. Like, come on, better maids and verners. Like, that's <laughs> it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> but we did. I mean, like Brittany's sister came out. My family came out. I mean, you know, we had um, we had like strong labor helping us because that was no. I don't know when we set off when we set out to do it. You know, in your mind, you're always like, okay, we're going to do this, this, and that. And on paper, it looks relatively easy. Okay, mm -hmm. and it looks like you know you're like, oh, this, this, and that. But when you're in the space. It's it's so much that you have to um, that you didn't really anticipate. Um, so you 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 have to kind of you know you have to be flexible. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I, I just feel like that's just a a nice space because we had just way more help there that we could you know we were able to pull it off. Now, Dr. Motley, you you mentioned uh, previously that uh, you got wind of this movement and and hoppy in the film uh through the queen of fula um i don't know what you call it sacred space or sacred womanhood <laughs> yeah. uh and isn't what's his name i forgot his name and i know he's gonna be mad uh because i forgot his name but i forget everyone's name so um but he he was the camera person for hoppy that's Robert the, Howard, um Robert I know Hill. he did a fit, yeah. Yeah, for, with Tahuti uh, Films. Yeah, with Tahuti Films. So what was, what drove, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspired you to go there in in the first place? Like what directed you to the sacred woman space and and, and Queen of Fool? You know, I'm trying to see how the universe aligns. Yes. And, and everything is random, but not so random, but. Uh, go ahead. I agree. I do feel like it was all kind of, you know, building blocks that aligned me. Um, what drove me to that is I was reading the Sacred Woman book. Um, I had that book for a while. And then I saw openings. This all happened during COVID. I think COVID, when I was, you know, when we were initially, everything was shut down and I was quarantining, I was thinking of how could I really ramp up my spirituality now that I'm sitting in my apartment all day? You know, like I could do kind of radical things that I didn't have a chance to do before. And so I I spent like a, a good part of that first year in quarantine, just kind of engaging in deep rituals and different, you know, programs and things of that sort. And so Sacred Woman was one of them. And a really cool thing about Sacred Woman is it exposes you to a lot of different stakeholders in the black community, comedic community. And so you're right, it was through Marie that, that she told us about the Hoppy film. And we also learned about, you know, just different organizations and different stakeholders. And so it was really good to just see, you know, kind of all of the different things that are happening and just get a, you know, holistic overview of it. So, so that's how that went. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, And I didn't know this until one of the shows, one of the Hoppy shows, I, I forgot which one it was, but you know, how I became acquainted with the with the film is that of course, Brother Taki reached out to me, uh, I believe on Facebook. <laughs> um, and, but he got my information 
from Dr. Riketi Amin in, in regards to, you know, adding some, some commentary on relationships between ancient Egypt and modern African people through language. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting that going back to the whole Hopi movement and the argument of building relationships, which is the foundation for building an economy, uh, how these networks come to be and expand and, and just how these little personal endeavors, you know, uh, Dr. Motley seeking a, I don't know how to say, a, or I guess new ways to express her spirituality and look deep within. And uh, <laughs> Sister Felicia just being nosy, uh, you know, brings all of us, you know, to together here and just, you know, have my relationship with uh, Dr. Ricchetti. And, and then now how those relationships now have brought in, have brought together, you know, other folks, you know, on tours, uh, in terms of the tour. And so we had a few of them on the program. So now, you know, my network has expanded as a result of, in, of interacting and engaging, you know, um, with, with those folks. And, you know, I just want to, you know, kind of highlight that for those of you you know, who are, uh, are listening live. And of course, those of you who are catching the archives of the importance of, you know, building and expanding, you know, one's relationships and, you know, what can be done, you know, in, in, in the future and the life. But I want to, because we're going to come back to the conference because, you know, some of what y'all been able to do, you know, with the, with the footage of the conference. But I want to go skip to the the tour. So this was not your first time in Egypt, I don't believe, for, for both of you. But what was different this time than the first time you went? And any of y'all can answer that. I would say uh, what was different was the itinerary, the guides. You know, this was my second time going, and I would say, depending on who you go with, they paint a different picture of, of you know, what Egypt looks like. And so you can go five times in a row and have a different experience, you know, just kind of depending on on who you're going with and, and what that itinerary looks like. And so for this second time around, this was my first time going with you and Fudishi, um, uh, Dr. Jeffries, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries. It was, it was just, it was very different. Um, even, you know, how we got to see um, Harkouf and we, we got to go off the traditional commercial path of, of kind of what they want you to see um, when, when looking at Egypt. And so I think that was extremely eye-opening, just getting that, um, being able to, you know, have the linguists with us who can interpret the walls. So we didn't have to get kind of the whitewashed, you know, tour of, of ancient Egypt. Um, that was the most enlightening and I would say empowering kind of part, or that was the difference from going in the first time. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, every time I've gone, it's been a different experience. Um, I think this time what made it special was that all the drama that happened in February. And so we were there with 85, well, 83, I was there with 82 other people who was like, hell to the no, we're going. And so that right there felt like, okay, all right, that's what's up. So all we knew that the people that was traveling with us wanted to travel with us and wanted, ex wanted to experience this, you know, uh, this experience with us. And so just that right there, it, it feels so much like a family. I say feels because it still feels like a family. You know, my son, my son is like, he's asking, he's like, oh, he's like, when are we gonna see them again? I was like, well, I don't know if we can get all 82 together, you know, but <laughs> that was, it was just a really, um, it was just a nice experience. And I think having the elders there, and that was the first Hoppy official tour. So all the places that we, 
um, showcase in the film we went to. And so that's another, um, you know, thing that made it really special. So, yeah, I think definitely the company that we had made it. All right. And um, I read this last week when um, we had our uh, other guest with us, but I want to read it again. This is a note or a comment that was posted on the video from the first open forum conversation. So what, as she said, you know, there was 80 plus other individuals who went on the the tour from what was it may 29th to june the 8th and so i just put an open call to those who can make it to come on the show and tell us about their experience so you know of course with that many people and schedules and existing all across the united states you're not going to get everybody you know on the program so uh and so, you know, a few still wanted to make their testimony known, even though they could not make it on the program. So I'm going to share my screen. And let's do that. And can you all see that? Let me remove that real quick. And so can y'all read that i don't know how y'all screens are but yeah I'll read it. okay so <laughs> this is and i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly uh sister fila barcliff and she makes the statement um i don't usually make comments but i felt moved to do so this time i was also on that trip and listening to the four of you moved me so much brought back such wonderful memories that I also wanted to share. I'm a grandmother and I was lucky enough to have the resource to bring my 12 year old grandson on the trip, on this trip. It was my second time in Egypt, but for us, if I went a thousand times, it would never be enough. I understand why Dr. Ben, Dr. Asa Hilliard, uh, Brother Renoko Rashidi, and so many scholars went to Egypt again and again. I hope that will be me as well. But this trip was so special to me because I got to share this history, this wondrous story with my young family member who I know will be impacted lifelong from this trip. When we arrived back in the States, I looked at him and his tears were streaming down. When I asked him, he said he wanted to stay in Egypt and I felt such joy. Finally, I'm also a teacher and plan to share all that I've learned this time with my teachers and students, I assume our fellow teachers and students. It was great being on the trip with you, Asar. And I responded back at some point, but that's just to give you some, some insight on the impact mm -hmm. that this trip uh, had on those who were able to attend. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for those of you who went on the trip, I don't know if he was not. I don't think he was the youngest. I think the. Yeah, he was. Was he, he was the youngest? Mm -hmm. the, the, the grand. He, I think he was the youngest on the tour. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the other. So there was, you know, it was multi-generational. So as you can tell from the story here, it was a grandmother and her grand. He was 12. And you also had a a grandmother her daughter and her daughter mm -hmm. that was on the yes. trip. So it was three generations. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if that young girl was younger or around the same age. No, she was, she was older. She was, uh, yeah, she was older. Yeah. He was the youngest. He was 12. Okay. Okay. So, you know, he was the youngest, uh, on the trip. So, you know, it wasn't too many, uh, folks, his age, but, uh, I know he was hanging out with your sons. Uh, oh my God, bit. let me tell you. <laughs> and you know what's interesting about this? So that same little kid, his I think his uncle came by the tent when we were at the African Street Festival and started okay. telling us about his 
nephew who went on the trip to Egypt. And we're talking and and, and he said, yeah, you know, um, his grandmother took him. I was like, wait, guy then? He was like, oh yeah, that's him. I was like, oh my God, like my kids <laughs> love him. And so they're supposed to be trying to get up um, because his mother came, I think the next day by the tent and I got her phone number. I was like, okay, let's right. please get these kids together. Because even, you know, my son who, um, for both my kids, but the youngest one was really, he was a little sad, um, you know, when we were coming back, because he was just like, you know, he just had so much fun getting to know everyone there. Mm. And in this space where, you know, there was like, not everyone knew each other, but I tell you, like by day two, I felt like we were literally like a big old family. Like for real, you know how people say, oh, we like a family. No, we were literally like a family. <laughs> it, it was it was just such a, um, such a nice feeling but i have to say and i was talking to taki about this later you know his trips are always like that people kind of just show up there like the first one i went to um it was i think maybe 20 of us there and i didn't know anybody mm. by day by like day two we were all like besties <laughs> and a lot and a lot of people on that on that trip i still have conversations with like we still you know uh communicate so it's um it's something it, it i don't think we can Say it enough times. It's really who you travel with um, that yeah. makes the difference. Um, because I talked to a sister who had a Groupon. She and I was rolling. I was like, I didn't even know they have Groupons for Egypt. But she said, Yeah, I went, you know, with the Groupon, and she was telling me about her experience. I was like, oh. I was like, Oh no, 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 you got to travel with us because her experience mm. was, you know, exactly what Dr. Motley was saying before. You know, whitewashed information. Um, you know. The, the her living quarters were not the best <laughs> so yeah i think it's all about who she you was is. staying at someone's house <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she, yeah she's like her stomach was hurting the whole entire time because i believe you know, that yeah <laughs> so i listen. came back i thought it was a terrorist attack in, <laughs> in my uh that's another conversation but uh but what's 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 not going to click for the young man until he's much older is that he was on the trip with doctors yeah you know exactly. rosalind and leonard jeffries and then in fudishi you know and others and you know he's he's a little young to be able to appreciate what that is or like you know if i i wish i was 12 it's like yeah i was on the trip with dr clark um some other guy no. named dr ben i don't know who he was uh you know just just to be able to throw names out there like that and be like yeah you know but that's that's that you know uh that's an experience that you know even though he enjoyed himself he won't realize the impact of what just happened you know mm -hmm. for, for years down the line uh but you know which is a good thing you know but um yeah so you know, we we mentioned Dr. Rosalind Jeffries and we mentioned, you know, uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, who we've had on the program. I haven't had Dr. Rosalind. I'm gonna have to get her on, just her by herself. And um, but you know, there was also Brother Infudishi, and speaking of Infudishi and Egypt and going back, y'all got another trip coming up. Yeah. And and it's in sync with his his classes. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so we um we we've had a week so far in his class, which is two classes. And you know, for people who still want to join, he 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 feels comfortable uh admitting students up until the end of like Sunday. Cuz that would be four classes and he's like after that, he's like we're moving too fast to have you know more people so if you you know if you went on the trip i see you oh i see you out there tamika what's up um if you are you know if you went on the trip you get a discounted price but if you're like thinking about you know taking this uh class you um you know you can definitely sign up until until monday but yeah so infudishi because every infudishi juhuti missed make sure you say his old name every time we would walk into a a spot you know, he was just given like all this like rich history and, and he, he put everything in a perspective for us. Right. And so um, 
I don't know which, do you remember, uh, uh, Brittany, where, where we were when they decided, uh, Taki and him, that, you know, we, we need to do a class when we got back? I don't even know what day it was. I think yeah. it was Luxor, though. I think it was Luxor. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, we had to do a class. And so um, we came back and Fugishi whipped up a class, a Madhu Nature and uh, uh, Kemetic Spirituality class. And it's every uh, Sunday and Monday night, mm -hmm. seven to nine. So. So well, I've always said, you know, with, and this is just tours in general, uh, especially those that are, are held by us, they need to be in conjunction with an introductory meta nature Ooh. class or course so that when the people are coming to uh, Egypt, they're able to at least recognize and articulate they won't, you know, be able to just read like it's a newspaper, uh, the Meta Nature, but they'll have some some background and be able to recognize and see some things. And, you know, so the, the trip will be, you know, just that more memorable because now they can come and say uh, that, yes, I'm, I was able to read the uh, the the Meta Nature and some basic things, you know, off the walls. And and so I think this is what Infodishi is doing, gearing up for the September uh, yeah. trip. And so they'll have a unique experience. Those people who decide, you know, to take his course and go to the um, to the uh, on the tour. I don't know what y'all call this tour. I don't know if it's one Africa yeah, part two. Uh, <laughs> No. <laughs> no, this is not. We're not doing. See the. See no, no. See the eighty. The, the other eighty-two people. They're the only ones up until this point who has ha, who has received the official Hoppy tour. This is okay. a pilgrimage to Kemet, but it, it, we're not doing the that Hoppy tour. Um, okay. You know this time, and that's a cool thing because this tour, yeah, Infidishi will be leading it, and if you're in the class, he's going to give you your certificate while we are selling down the Hoppy River. So that's Indeed. Great. Yeah. Yeah. If we didn't get the <laughs> get the uh the boat experience this one. I've been on it though. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's 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 a it's a very good look. And I see Dr. Kalamba and Sapo says receive my message on TikTok. I don't even check TikTok. Uh, you have a TikTok account? <laughs> yeah, I have one video I think on TikTok. <laughs> I don't check that much. So I'll, I'll, I'll go look. Uh, and so if y'all don't know, Dr. Uh, Sylvain Kalamba and Sapo out of the Democratic Republic of Congo lives in Belgium right now. I translated one of his books from French wow. into English. And I hope to have him on the documentary uh, if I get a chance to go out there to uh, Belgium. Him and Dr. Muba Binge Bololo. He would have been good uh, on the trip yeah. as well. But, you know, he only speaks French. So uh, in a little bit of English, so uh, so we had to have a translator. But um, I'll, I'll 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 definitely check that out. Uh, I'll be uh, you know I have a bad habit. I don't be checking Instagram. Facebook is the only one that I check. You know, uh, but yeah, and your texting works. time and depending on what time during the day, your texting time is a little slow. I'm just saying. Look, I, mean, I don't. I don't be on my phone like that. I just my phone is used to call folks. What you doing? We meeting on Thursday? Fine. That's it. I don't. I don't. I don't be on the phone like this. My life. You know. I, I'm. 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 I'm on here on the laptops, and 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 the like. So, That's you know, cool. my, I, I I code. I'm doing graphic stuff, and I need a big screen. I can't be, you know, on the on the phone. So it may be a good uh, day or two before I see your message. <laughs> and uh, let me uh, oh, accidentally hit this camera thingy thing. <laughs> so uh, it's really sensitive. So once you knock it, out the thing it um you know it just knocks out the thing so you got to restart uh, oh. the whole process so uh 
I guess the camera phone and it was communicating and they didn't like how I didn't uh, communicate through the phone and they got together <laughs> and conspired to uh, not let y'all see me. But um, so now there is the conference. So, you know, uh, I purposely didn't talk too much about the conference because I want to have that uh, in terms of its own segment. But can you remind us of all of the speakers that were um, speaking at the conference, either live or, you know, via um, Zoom? And and the the DVD and streaming that is available now of the conference. You can give us those details. Okay. Either one of y'all. <laughs> I was I was looking like, well, who, where are all the speakers at? <laughs> We're about to play 20, 20 questions right now with these speakers. But listen, go to happyfilm.com and you can get the One Africa um, uh, live stream. It's twelve hours, and it's it's mm. great. So we had, um, so Dr. Ken Harris, he was mm -hmm. the MC and he's from Detroit. He's also the president of um, the National Business League. He's the fourth president. Cause I, I always say this when I say his name cause I'm super proud of him. He's like, it, the organization has been around for 122 years and there's only been four presidents and he's one. And he's a relatively young mm -hmm. dude. So, I mean, just to be able to get that position and to really take the National Business League to the next level is really, you know, that's fire within itself. But he was the MC and he was great. He mm -hmm. he was excellent. Um, you have a little list up there? Dr. Yes, Mom? I got a list. <laughs> <laughs> I know who Vichy Juhuti missed. He opened the conference. Yeah. Yes, we had um, Riza Islam. We had Sharazad Ali. Um, mm -hmm. Professor James Small, Dr. Alicia Watkins, she she was talking about relationships. Um, we had Baina Bello, Jabari Osaze, Dr. Susan Tata, um, and it's, oh, we had Kaba Kamini as well. I believe that was everyone. And Asar, um, we had Asar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Asar. Asar was, was like, there, wasn't I? Yeah, you straight up take notes. With with the SAR, that was great. Yeah, and then we had Who a nice missing party. somebody. Well, and um, oh, Doctor Falou, Doctor Falou, Doctor Jadru, yep. Yeah. But she came mm -hmm. on late, and um, oh, and of course, Doctor Rosalind Jeffries and Doctor um, Leonard Jeffries. But we also had a really cool um, uh, panel discussion, which was uh, again led by our MC Doctor Harris, but uh, Doctor Motley was on there. Uh, Dr. Alicia Watkins, Ifudishi Jihuti Miss, um, and Michael Imhotep from the African mm -hmm. History Network, which was great. And um, and then our, you know, we gave a, we gave out the Dr. Renoko Rashidi Awards, and one of them was to New Era um, Zeke, their their leader. And if anybody, they need to look up New Era and just see all the wonderful. Oh my God, like they're about their business. They do. Mm -hmm. They they don't do a lot of talking. All their stuff mm -hmm. is great action but yeah so he was also on the panel as well so that was great i got a uh a, a brief interview capture with him uh oh. after the, the, the program okay. and i need to I, um I'm, I'm hoping i still because i hope i didn't lose this brother's information um and and not not the uh person you're just talking about but um, this this one elder who let me see if I can share my screen uh, who does the yoga. Um, let me see. Y'all oh, familiar with him? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get him on. So I'm I'm gonna schedule a Detroit week. So okay, he's one of the on. elders uh, that I'm going to have on, and and the like. So he's he's very interesting. Yeah, and see, you know, this event was again just like this trip. 
we were all just, um, you know, we were determined to have this one Africa conference. And there were so many people that were trying to get people not to, you know, show up and not present, you know, and so the people who showed up there, you know, on Zoom or in person, we were like, thank you, thank you, thank you. But all the people that came and all the vendors, we were all on one floor. It was just, it was just such a nice time. Um, and I always know we're having a nice time if I get a headache. If I don't get a headache, that means ain't nothing happening. There's no energy flowing, <laughs> you know. And we just uh, that was just a nice, that was a nice time. It was a good day for black people. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Well, um, again, can you tell us where uh, they can get the DVD for um, the conference that was just uh, for the for the Detroit conference, the one Africa conference? Yeah. And, and any other information that's uh, pertaining to that? OK, yeah, they just go to happyfilm.com. And they just, All right. yeah, and it's, we don't, we're not, we don't have that as a DVD. You can only live stream and you can digitally download it okay. or you can rent it and it's only 20 bucks. Like that's good. 12 for all, hours. For 12 hours. It's, it's only 20 bucks. And the thing about this and why it's so important that people purchase this is because this thing was shut down, right? because they didn't want us to talk about, they didn't want us to get together and congregate and talk about our history. And so purchasing this is super important because it's it's almost like a, it's a revolutionary act. You know how they say black love is revolutionary because other people feel some type of way when we just show in love with each other. And so, you know, for those of you that, you know, didn't get on the live stream and even if you did, trust me, if you rewatch it, you're gonna be like, I didn't know they said this, especially that, um, that Dr. Susan Tata. I mean, um, <laughs> it was just uh, an incredible experience, but it's super important that that the family come out and support uh, support the conference. It's about you know power and unity. So, Indeed. Yeah. Well, how can um, I don't know if y'all you know just want to interact through uh, the hoppy medium. Or if y'all have, you know, uh, personal uh, social media handles that you want to uh, share with others, but um, at at minimum, the 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 Hoppy uh, links. Where can they go uh, to be a part of the the Hoppy movement in the social media sphere? Oh, and yeah, how can they get in contact with you all? Okay, yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, I, I I just put in the comment section or the private chat for you, our website. So this is the thing, mm -hmm. like to be part of the movement, you have to, um, there's there's four principles, right? Um, love black people, support black businesses, become more financially astute with your money and teach the youth mm -hmm. the truth. But we need people to do stuff, right? So th those are our guiding principles for now. You know, eventually we'll, we'll grow, we may add more, we may fine tune those, but um, we need people to subscribe to us you know, there's a lot of little people, and I'm sure with you, you know, they just sit, they watch all the Asar Imhotep, you know, interviews and stuff, and they may even like comment sometimes, but they don't want, they won't subscribe, you know, and this is like, well, I'm like only oh. if, if, if I say something uh, controversial, <laughs> then, then they'd be like, and another thing, brother Asar, <laughs> yes, I get yes. it. Then. But. Yes, yes. So we need we need the support that we need is for um, for the community to actually subscribe and and um, and not only subscribe but share our videos. Uh, they can go to happyfilm.com and get connected to the newsletter that we have. Mm -hmm. um, you know that we we put out every month. Um, and yeah, follow us on all our social uh, media platforms, which are Happy Film. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, and YouTube. Do you check your TikTok uh, messages? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Don't listen. I mean, we. God, I feel like we gotta do dancing or something to be on TikTok. I don't know if we're gonna be dancing. <laughs> I don't even know yeah. how to use TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other piece too. I mean, I'm like, oh, look, these the four the four that we have right now are already no joke. 
Indeed. But you know what? I just want to back up to something you said, Asar. Well, you mm-hmm. didn't really say this, but when you were talking about uh, when you said it was the first time you saw us was at One Africa, right? Because that was the first time we, I, I saw a lot of people. It was the first time uh, by Ina Bello. I had never seen in person. Um, let me see who. Yeah, I think that was the only person because everyone else, oh, well, they were, you know, on Zoom or they were in person. But the in person people, I, I pretty much saw everyone except for Ina Bello. But when I saw you, I was like, wait, because for some, I don't know where I got this from. So when I, I would look at Hobby, for some reason, I just thought you were, you know, like average height guy. You know, just like a like, <laughs> like guy like my height, you know, just like a regular little guy. I saw you, I was like, wow, okay, it was okay, Asar. Do you have that deep old voice? So people out there who've never seen Asar in person, <laughs> and people that went on the trip with us can attest. Like Asar is no joke. You were like tall. <laughs> you had you had your guns out at, at the at the at Detroit. Yeah, I was like, wait, I was like, we can't have guns here. <laughs> you had guns, your friend had guns. I was like, what is going on over here? So I say that all to say. You guys need to support Asar. Make sure you guys are following him and liking him on all his uh, on his videos. And um, and yeah, you got to meet him in person. And just tell him to leave his guns at home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had a, a couple of people say uh, even at the uh, the New York John the um, the the Africa International yeah. Arts Festival when I, uh, it was a brother. He just said, "I didn't know you was this big." <laughs> Uh, exactly. sorry. I'm like, what are you like? Did y'all think I was a midget or, or, or something? Not a like, do I just look that short on, on, no. on camera? <laughs> yeah, not a midget, but just like a like a short person, you know, <laughs> not like a midget, you know, They're just like, like a short person. When we was in uh in Egypt, this happened twice while we were there, and and I'm and I'm thinking like. They really don't get American TV if if little children is referencing this. So you know, of course, everybody's trying to get you to uh, to purchase something, you know, uh, very aggressively. So there's two occasions where these these young guys were calling me Rambo, and I'm like, what do you even know about Rambo? And what made you think that I was Rambo? Like you know, like like how are you making that equation? Like what what year of television of American television are y'all getting out here in Egypt that y'all first reference is Rambo? But uh, but I'm not that big at all. <laughs> but uh, that's 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 hilarious. But yeah, it was oh, it was really? interesting. Uh, I love Egyptian people, except the trolls. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, damn trolls. Anything with you, uh, Dr. Martley? Uh, no, I would say when I went to the conference, it was it was exciting meeting everyone too, and that was right before the Egypt trip. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are going to be the people we're traveling with. I mean, that's when I met Tika there, and just kind of all of the things. Um, also meeting Brother Abdul, it was it was good to see him. Um, and it's funny. Hey, just on the phone earlier with Kalia, you know, talking about the connections we made on the trip. I still talk to everyone. Shout out to David. I saw him in the chat. You know, it's it's funny how we truly are a family. We mm-hmm. check in with each other when we can. You know, no love lost. I'm asking people all the time, when you come into D.C., you know, know that you have a place to stay and kind of all of those things. So um, I really, really have, have enjoyed just communing with everybody and, you know, gleaning from each other and, and sharing resources, yeah. knowing that we have that family and just how quick the connection was made was is almost eerie, you know, um, of yeah. just how, how we just, you know, kind of stuck together. So I am grateful for it all and, and for all the people we've interacted with so far. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And you know, a lot of them are in the are in the uh, class that we're having, and some are deciding to travel back with us. So, mm. yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all got to make sure that they get uh, a photo of the Sphinx, though, because uh, some are just going back for that, just to get the uh, the photo in, in in front of the Sphinx. Uh, yes. So yes. time wouldn't allow this trip. Yes. Uh, to, to yes, because together. you know, and that's the other thing we I don't think we talked enough about how physically rigorous was was this trip. I mean, you know, I mean, I think 
I felt like Indiana Jones at some point with, with some of, you know, uh, just the things we we did. <laughs> and the fact that we had, was it, it was 23 elders traveling with us and they was mm. hanging, you know, um, and it was hot, but no one seemed to, like those things didn't really matter. It's just the fact that we were just all together and taking in, um, and taking in these sites. <laughs> it was nice. Nice. I remember when we was at uh, one of the pyramid sites, and I forgot the sister. I, uh, I do apologize for forgetting your name, but it was a, a a sister, you know, who stopped me and was like, "Can you, um, you know, look after my friend?" It was an elder gentleman who wanted to go up the the high steps uh to the pyramid but he you know had uh certain physical ailments and i'm like oh i got him and so you know we walked uh up the up the stairs and to make sure that you know he got down and we made sure the other elders and stuff got down so you know this is a steep hike to to the uh the pyramid door and so even though certain sections of it have you know rails they're kind of frail and you yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Is he frozen? Yep. Asar, the great Asar Imhotep is frozen? <laughs> Let's see. It may just reboot. I don't know. Rambo. Oh, there's a con. The con divine is in the um chat too. Tamika had me cracking up at this chat. <laughs> yes. Oh, not the swollen. That's funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh wait, wow! It's this our show now. We're having to um, brother Sar. Okay, guys, can you, can you guys hear us? Um. Yeah, are you guys um spins and plates? Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear us or not, but um so we're gonna be guest hosts for the uh Asar Imhotep show. <laughs> Happy has taken over the the uh Asar Imhotep show. Oh, okay, great. Well, you know it's so nice to see you guys up um up in the chat. VC. Yeah, D Joseph. Wow, this is so nice. So um, yeah, you guys have to come on. You know, make sure you are are uh, definitely following a star and happy. So we were just taking over your show, star. <laughs> I don't know what uh, is up with this other computer. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You got to look at, wait, who's everything is everything? Everything is everything. <laughs> yeah, wait, what's up with everything? Wait, a hobby is a trickling word? What? Okay, come on, everything is everything. You're going to have to explain that. Uh, you have to explain that little comment right there. Oh, sorry, it's really gone. Yeah, he couldn't get back. Oh, no. So look, family, make sure um, you guys are uh, following Asar Imhotep and following us on Happy is right there on the screen. Um, I don't know what happened. Oh, OK, you're back. Yay. Yeah. I think oh, just oh, the, oh. the internet went out. Message us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this every, yeah, wait, we need who's everything is everything because they need to message us. <laughs> we gotta find out who this what this the story is about. Oh, there's Musa. What's up, Musa? DJ Imhotep. Oh, that's funny. 
Yeah. So, you know, you guys should definitely make sure you are, um, if you are available to travel with us September 9th through the 17th, it's going to be great. Um, if Udishi Juhuti miss, it's going to be leading our tour. He's doing a class, a master class right now. Um, and it, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, so please make sure you guys tune in for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Molly. Oh, okay, wait. I was like, oh, no, Dr. Molly is frozen too. But no, you will be. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, I see Akan Divine. He uh, spent a lot of time with us at the African Street Festival. So shout out to, um, to Akan Divine. Oh, you're on your phone now? On oh, now. Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't have my stand, so, um, but I do appreciate y'all hanging on. It would happen like in the last when I'm about to close uh, <laughs> the, the technical difficulties, but um, I'm sorry, you, you were saying something. I didn't want to interrupt uh, your thought before I close out. No, I was just, I was just saying, um, we, we want to figure out who everything is everything is. Because now he's this person saying Asara can explain. They've been putting some some um, thought provoking text up in in your chat. <laughs> so I was like, wait, who is this person? They need to message us. I, I have no idea. My my chat, they be having their own conversations. Uh, <laughs> and 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 if, and if you aren't privy to the beginning of the conversation, you're just gonna be lost uh, from that point on. Trying to trying to jump in like jump rope. Uh, oh, you know, funny. like back in the day, but um, <laughs> that's funny. But I I do appreciate uh, both of you uh, for spending some of your uh, Friday evening um, with us with the Mbongi crew uh, and informing us about your experience in Egypt and of course the conference, which you can download or stream at HoppyFilm.com. And, you know, get to hear many of the dynamic speakers, uh, some who are on the trip and um, and some who are probably going on the trip sometime in the future. Who knows? You have to talk to. And everybody else. Uh, but um, until then and until next time, uh, thank thank you, Dr. Motley. Thank you, Sister Felicia. Uh, for joining. Uh, we're going to have our good brother Omawali Africa uh, up here soon. And oh, okay. and I'm going to see if I can get uh, Dr. Ife. So we, what I'm going to start doing since I'm, I'm here in the, the Philly area is start doing some just some video interviews of, of some people instead of the, the live streaming uh, in the way that we're doing here. So I think Dr. Ife will be my first uh, oh, okay. for for this and and because it's, it's it's a lot of folks out here uh interesting folks that i can talk to and and you know let y'all know what's the what's the latest and greatest you know in the world of uh black thought yeah and so Uh, Till next time